Detroit. State football brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a Bud. Health Alliance plan. Your health deserves the best. Buddy's Pizza, a great family tradition for over 50 years. Now with nine convenient locations. Metro 25 Tire Centers. For the dealer nearest you, dial 1-800-METRO-25. The Eyeglass Factory, the best price in sight. And by Northwest Airlines, some people know how to fly. here at the Wayne State Stadium, and the Wayne State Tartars are taking on the scary St. Joseph Pumas. Hello, everybody. I'm Cliff Russell, along with Stan Edwards and Skip McElz. The Wayne State Tartars have a chance to win their third game in a row, the first time they've done that in a long time. And Stan Edwards, a couple of Tartar players are going to play an important role if they get a victory today. That's right, Cliff. Joe Goff, in particular, is 30 yards away from 1,000 yards, 155 yards away from being Wayne State's all-time leading rusher in a single season. Uh, we look for him to get the ball today and look for him to be a big factor in Wayne State ground game. Mark Friday had an excellent game last week, and we look for some big things from him today as well. The St. Joe Pumas come into this game 0-6-1. They've had some bad luck, Skip Mackles, but they also have a lot of potential. Yes, they do. The luck started to go bad early in the season, Cliff. Preseason, that is. Harry Vinegar, their tailback, their leader on the field, went down to injury. So they've had no ground attack. So they've gone to the air. They've had a sophomore quarterback, Dave Jordy, who was... Uh, a sophomore, there's some good times, some bad times. The good times is he's thrown for 1,200 yards, six touchdowns. The bad times, he's thrown nine interceptions. At key times, though. He likes to go to two receivers, though. McWilliams, the tight end, and, and Williams. Phil Williams, the wide receiver. Two good receivers. They've accounted for something like 56 catches this year. Two good ball players. When they do business, they're going to go to these two guys. Well, Wayne State coach Brian Van Gorder would love to get a win today. Stan Edwards, what are the keys to victory for the Tartars? Well, as you mentioned, they've won the last two out of three ball games, and they need to build on the momentum. Momentum is going to be a big part of this Wayne State football team today. They've won. They've been playing well in the last couple of weeks to see if they can continue to do it. Two, they have to have a balanced attack. They expect to give the ball to Joe Goff a great deal today, but they're going to have to put the ball in there to keep the defense honest. Three, they're not playing for any postseason play, so they're just going to play for pride. We're going to see if the Wayne State football team will come out today with a lot of pride and uh, really fired up for today's ball game. When you talk about pride, the Pumas 0-6-1 would love to get a victory. They have some talent. They're young and skip Mackles. The keys to victory for the Pumas if they can pull one out today. Well, Cliff, the first thing they have to do is stop the rushing attack of Wayne State. You've got to stop that. Secondly, I think they have to control the clock with the passing game. No quick scores. Bring the ball down the field. Nice, methodic drive. And third, uh, Jordy's got to keep mistakes at a minimum. No interceptions today, no turnovers. Well, as we mentioned, this is a cold day here at Wayne State Stadium, but the field is pretty firm, not wet, so perhaps the turnovers will be kept down to a minimum. Tell me something, gentlemen. You both played very briefly. On cold days like this, is it a good time to play? Well, if you're Wayne State and you have a rushing attack like Stanley, the great runner he was at Michigan, I think it's a big positive thing. The wind is blowing a little bit. It's going to hurt, I think, St. Joe's passing attack. Stanley? Well, you know, for the fans, it seems going to be a little bit chilly, though, but this is great football weather. This is good running football weather, and it should be in Wayne State's favor. By the way, Skip Mackle's a star at Michigan State. Stanley Edwards a star at Michigan. I'm just here. I played basketball. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with the kickoff and more Wayne State football after this message. Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, so we were having a good time after work when this older guy walks up and orders a Bud. Give me a Budweiser. One could have been a coincidence. Yeah, but then... Budweiser! 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 Whoa! Think about it. Do we like Bud? They like Bud. Yeah, could it be we're really more alike than we thought? So young! Obviously, this was going to require further study. Having nightmares about health care paperwork? Rest easy. At Health Alliance Plan, you only need this form. Your health deserves the best. Health Alliance Plan offers more doctors in more locations than any HMO in Michigan. Shouldn't you look into a new health care plan? Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. Snookum, get me a big, fresh breakfast. Big and fresh. No, I want the new big boy weekday breakfast bar, only $2.99. Scrambled eggs, fresh fruit, biscuits, bacon, pancakes, all I could eat, $2.99. Try, Snookums. I'm trying. Peach buns, I want the big boy weekday breakfast bar for $2.99. Try harder. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? To understand Asia, you have to understand its customs, its mystery, its people. You have to know what makes a good impression and what offends. For over 40 years, we've been learning about Asia. So in addition to our convenient schedules, we can give you something no other U.S. airline can. The knowledge comes after 40 years of helping people do business in Asia. It's a cold, nippy, but beautiful day here at Wayne State Stadium. The wind's blowing from the northeast at 12 miles per hour, partly cloudy, which means it's partly sunny. 44, <laughs> 44 degrees out there, and uh, as you can see, people needing to keep warm here. Good day for football. Good day for heavy coats and hats and, and blankets and whatever else you need to keep warm. We'll see if it's a good day also for the Wayne State Charters as they take on the Pumas from St. Joe's. This is Cliff Russell here doing play-by-play -play along with Skip Mackles and Stanley Edwards on the field. Skip, uh, Wayne yeah. State really would love to get a victory here today. Yeah, you know, so I'm talking with Brian Van Gorda before the game, uh, Clifford. Uh, this is a situation, uh, um, and I've been doing uh, a situation that Wayne State's never been in that four or five um four or five years now we you know they haven't had three three victories in a row had a shot at potentially getting to the 500 level we're taking a look here at at hillsdale right now they're leading the conference at 7-0 ashland is five and two ferris little bunch up there saginaw valley and all these names are pretty good football programs and now right now wayne state's moving up and uh, the coach van gore is talking about the philosophy Take hold now. A lot of ballast in the conference as we are set for the kickoff here. Number six, Al Dilts, and nine, Phil Williams. Williams, one of those star receivers deep for St. Joe's to receive the kickoff. I think it's a positive clip that they're giving the ball to St. Joe's, put the defense, let the defense try to set the tempo of the game. It is. Now, on a day where it's real cold like this, do you think the defense can... Uh, Force some turnovers early, Skip. Well, I, I, yes, I do. I think the wind's going to play a big factor in this whole situation. So right now, we're going to see what's going to happen now. Well, that kickoff was taken by Al Dilson. He was hit hard and quick by Mike Jensen, who sped down the right side of the field. A return of about 15 yards, where the Pumas will take over first and 10. They're not going to see. Here we take a look at Jordy coming on the field right now. Jordy's going to be putting the ball up in the air talking with coach reagan earlier only five running plays Cliff. only five only five running, plays? running plays so you know the ball's gonna go in the air but he's a young quarterback a sophomore has a good arm and as skip mackles mentioned has had some good days in the air but uh, they don't have a win yet and the first play of the running play. <laughs> After we talk about passing. Here's one of the five. I'll tell you what. One of the five running plays it was right off the tackle here. A little like form a little cross buck right here almost. Did a nice job that time opening up a hole. Brent Eastwood, the ball carrier. He was hit by Mike Jensen, the man who made the tackle on the kickoff. 
And they have a short gain on the play, about five yards, makes it second down and five. Actually, Wayne State's in that stunt four. Jordy back to pass, look at him. He's gonna go deep, long, quick. The pass was intended for George Murphy, incomplete. Rashawn Hardy on the coverage for the Turners. That just shows you the philosophy, Clifford, of the St. Joe football team right now. Second and five is a good opportunity for any football team. Uh, it only takes five more yards. They've got two more cracks, and they go right to the air, so they really don't have much confidence in that running game. It's third down and five. Ball still at the St. Joe's 30. Both wideouts are wide right now. Murphy and Williams. Jordy looks over the line. I'd like to go to McWilliams, the tight end in this situation. Look, quick pass. Intended for your man. Oh, no, that was Damon Scheidt. But it was incomplete. That'll make it fourth and five at the 30. So the first series unsuccessful for St. Joe's. And that's exactly what Wayne State wanted to do. Turn the ball back to them offensively very quickly. Jason Miskus, a combination quarterback and punter for St. Joe's. Tight Maybe formation. Heavy Herbert deep for the Chargers to receive the punt. Fumbles it, but he gets the punt off. Takes the St. Joe's bounce, comes to rest at about the 22 where it's down, and it will be first and 10 charters. A 48-yard punt. We'll be back with more Wayne State football after this message. Glass Factory, buy one, get one free. Choose one pair of top quality glasses for $59.95 and get a second pair free. And for a limited time, bifocals are no additional charge. That's right, two pairs, $59.95 single vision or bifocals, no additional charge. At the eyeglass factory, buy one pair of top quality contacts for $59.95, get a second pair of contacts and a pair of eyeglasses free. Buy one, get one free, $59.95. Only at the eyeglass factory. Go ahead, compare. For my money, I'd go with a proven winner every time. Ford Taurus. The 93s are here. Now lease a new Ford Taurus DL for as low as $223 a month. That's $223 a month for only 24 months. Now lease the best for less. Register to win a trip for two to the 93 Rose Bowl and Parade. See your Metro Detroit Ford dealer for details. Now, are you ready to check out the proven winner? Taurus at your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. See any of the 31 Metro Detroit Ford dealers. People say... You're going to give me a guarantee of up to 80,000 miles in my tires and free rotations and more, all in writing? That's right. And that means you'll rest easy. Peace of mind. Plain buddy, may I? Toby! I got to call Mother. Mother? Now at the Metro 25 clearance sale, Firestone Supreme all-season tires start at just $24.88. Mom, you hit me first. I never start fights. Hurry, Metro 25's clearance sale know, ends soon. Call 1-800-METRO-25. There was a 10-yard holding penalty on that St. Joe's punt, so the Tartars will take the ball over first and 10 at their own 12 instead of the 22, their first possession in this yeah. game. Well, you really, you know, Eddie Herbert had a uh, chance to get a fair catch on that football cliff, and he didn't, he had trouble with the sun in his eyes, so he backed off it. That caused 15 yards with the ball bouncing, and now the penalty on top of him puts him in a very precarious position down here on the 12-yard line. Tartars start first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Ray Ponder was wide left, but the quick handoff went to Dustin Cunningham, who went through the left side of the line. He was brought down by Jim Hilbert, the linebacker. Gain of about three yards on the play, second and seven, ball at the 15, Skip. Yeah, Coach Reagan is talking about the misdirection that Wayne State likes to run a lot in their, in their scheme so that everybody's going to try to stay home and it's going to be almost a, a six-man alignment. As you can see right now, it's five, but the linebackers are up close with the one linebacker shifting towards the strength of the offense. Quick handoff to Dolph. He gets maybe three yards. Well, he's the mock man, Clifford. He's trying to get 1,000 yards for the season in this game here today. Yes, he is. He's not too far away from being the single-season rushing leader. Jim McDonald on the tackle for St. Joe's. Very important on this drive that they get the ball to the 30, the 40-yard line, get a couple of first downs, move the chain, 
not only to give them room to punt the ball, but just the confidence level again going in. Here's a game that they're supposed to win, and we'll talk about that as we go on. Say to them. Another game of three made it third and four. Potter was wide right, Friday back, rolls right, looks late, looks deep, and he just keeps it himself and runs right out of bounds. He's chased out of bounds once again by Mr. Hilbert. You know, it's the first time, too, as we take a look at Friday right here doing a good job. He's trying to get to the stakes at the 22-yard line. He's a little short, but it's the first time, Cliff, as we take a look at him rolling out right into your living room, that he looks physically well. And talking with Brian before the game, he says, yeah, he played a great game up northern last week. He's physically fit, finally. Good break for the Tartars. Good coverage by St. Joe's. Potter was uh, deep. But there was no uh, opening for him, so there will be a punt by Wayne State. Punt was taken by Eric Page. Fakes right, runs left, and he's tackled, wrestled out of bounds by Scott Damaschke. Maybe a return of four yards on the punt. And first and ten for St. Joe's. Officials spotting the ball now to be first and ten. Ball is at the Pumas, oh, let's say 37-yard line. Well, right now, St. Joe is at the field position and starting to turn to their advantage right now. Now they've received their second possession of the football, but they've received it at the 37-yard line here. If this continues, very positive for St. Joe. Well, so far, neither team able to do anything offensively. Two wide right for St. Joe. Jordy marks out the six. Quick handoff. And here's the second of those five rushing plays. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fancy that time, folks. It's just a really, they have the strength of their formation to the right going into the double wing formation off tackle, straight handoff. Nothing fancy, man on man blocking. Uh, as you can see, as they've been describing it, nothing fancy. Telling the offensive line to kick it out and let's see what we can go with it. Uh, it almost seems like they're trying to keep the defense honest right now. Dolezuski and Kane on the tackle. Makes it second and about eight. Once again, he's with the ball carry. He gets maybe a yard. Well, as in all running attacks, the most important person that you have to control is that person over the nose, over the center. It all starts there, folks. And they're not doing a very good job with it right now. We talked about how St. Joe likes to pass the ball, but they've come out as a running team so far here in the first quarter. Well, I'll tell you, once again, I, I mentioned McWilliams is the tight end that I said earlier in the first series they like to go. We've got to tackle right now saying that a blitz is coming. Let's see if Wayne State blitzes. They don't. And he's got some room. Gets the pass off. He's claiming he caught it. And the officials, the officials are signaling a catch. This is Brian Williams right now, the wideout. That's a good job of making that catch. And he really sold the officials, Clifford, on that catch. <laughs> he did. He was he was celebrating and uh, <laughs> celebrating the reception before the officials came to make the call. <laughs> That's a very heady ball player right there. He took his word for it. That'll make it first and ten for St. Joe's ball is in Wayne State territory. Ball at the Charter 46. And we got trips left. All three wideouts on the left side. Eastwood in the backfield. Jordy looks over the line, barks out the signals, and he commands off to the to the to Eastwood coming out of the backfield. Well, you know something. Uh, you know, a lot of times, and for the most part, offensive coordinators like to spread the field and they do that by putting the trips right the trips left and they're going to move defensive ball players all over but if they don't block up front i don't care where you move them it ain't going to work it didn't work there only one yard on the game to uh, second down and nine ball at the wayne state 45 and so far the passing pumas have been the uh, running pumas <laughs> There we go with the trip once again down here to, to your, the left side of the formation. Same formation as last play. This time, Jordy rolls left, looks, has some time. He lets it fly, and the pass is caught by Murphy. A fumble on the play, but recovered by Murphy. And a substantial game for St. Joe's. Jordy does a good time, that's a good job that time coming out. He rolls left, and as you can see, 
I believe it's going to be Eastwood that gives him the protection on the corner, and they're flooding the zones over here with the three wideouts, and look what happens. Wide open against it. I didn't quite see it, but I think, believe it was a zone coverage by Wayne State that time. A gain of 24 yards on the play with Sean Hardy with the tackle. First and 10, ball is at the turn of 21. And again, a fake handoff to Eastwood. Jordan keeps it himself, but he gets nowhere. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage by big number 64, Eric Ruth. Well, here's the third option of their running plays. Here's a, an option that they really don't like to run. This is really not Jordy's favorite play. He likes to throw the football, has a big, strong arm, and he's coming down the line, and he's going to option the football. You're not going to see that too much this afternoon. He gained absolutely nothing on that play. It'll be second down and 10 ball, still at the Wayne State 21. And wide to the right, we have Williams and Scheidt. Two backs in the backfield. Williams comes in motion left. He was in motion. Jordy back. Fakes the handoff. Looks low. It looks long. Let's it fly again. And the marker is down. He attempted the pass. It's interference. Attempted pass with McWilliams. Eddie Herbert comes over the back and the flag flies. They missed they missed a flag here against St. Joe's. We had motion. The motion man went up the field before the snap count. Should have been illegal procedure on that play before this pass interference, as you can see. As you can see, Herbert attempts to come over the top to at least get a hand on the ball, but uh, he made contact, and the official throws the flag on him. So far, the uh, St. Joe Pumas, who are without a win this season, are driving on the Tartars. They are deep into Wayne State territory. It is first and 10 Pumas. Ball is now at the Tartar 18-yard line. Pumas driving. See if the Tartars can bend but not break. Billings went into motion. Jordy went and goes back. Let's it fly. Oh, oh. He hit the man in motion. Billings, pass complete. Hit hard by Rob Zeno of the Tartars, but not until after a five-yard game. He's um, six feet, 180-pound junior, and uh, he come up and laced him that time. Billings makes the reception, but he pays for it. This group, uh, George, let me have get a few, get my body turned up field before you let me uh, get hit like this. Nice picture. He never saw it coming. No, he didn't. And this is where they've been having trouble, folks, because of their running game inside the 20 of scoring right now. And here it is right there. They were trying to go to a middle screen right there, and it was a middle screen to the tight end. He didn't turn around quick enough. The defense got to him. They had a blitz going on. Right call for the play, but they didn't they didn't perform. They didn't they didn't complete the play. Well, led by Marty Moranek, a, a gaggle of Tartars, if that's what you call them, just <laughs> rained over Jordy. A Look loss of 14 yards on that play. Here's, here's the middle screen. It was going to McWilliams that time. Jordy's looking and seeing what happened here. He's got five green shirts on him. He's not happy. The so ball is back now at the 29-yard line of the Tartars. Third down. Williams is wide left. Jordy back. Runs up through the middle. Finds a hole in the pocket. He takes it himself and runs. And finally, he's brought down and tackled. Well, he does a good job that time. He knows he can't make the first down, but he wants to bring him back into field goal range. At least he has the shot now to try to put three points on the board. It's going to be on the, on the off hash mark, and uh, it's, it's better for the sidewinder kicker because uh, what's going to happen is the ball will curve in for him. Is the win a factor? We're going to see. He's going into the win. There in Coleman. Stopped him from getting the first down. So a 39-yard field goal attempt by Russ Thomason. It's up. It has the legs, but it's no good. Wide left. And the Tartars' defense bends but does not break. Still no score. But we'll be back with more Tartar football after this message. Okay, so why is it the only thing we have in common with these older guys? Give me a Budweiser. It's the beer we drink. Coincidence, perhaps? Well, perhaps there's some unseen force that binds the universe together and makes us like Bud. Or perhaps you guys could just ask him. 
Budweiser just isn't like other beers. Beachwood age. It's the rice. It's the hops. Whoa, maybe we can learn something from our elders after all. Feeling pressure to make life more productive? Relax. HAP keeps more people well than any HMO in Michigan. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. When it comes to health care costs, you can open wide or say ah. With HAP, you can enjoy no deductibles, co-pays, or out-of-pocket costs. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. When Russ Beeler sold his millionth piece of original recipe, he had a Colonel Lookalike contest. How better to celebrate the world-famous original recipe chicken? It's what all the lookalikes ate, including the winner, whose resemblance was uncanny. And now get the Colonel's Dozen for just $9.99. Twelve pieces of chicken, large mashed potatoes with gravy, and a large coleslaw. A meal for your entire family. The Colonel's Dozen, only $9.99 in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. The St. Joseph Pumas drive on the Tartars, come very close, but miss a field goal attempt, and it's still scoreless here at Wayne State Stadium. The Tartars take over first and ten at their own 22, Skip Mackle. Yes, you know, talking with Coach Reagan before the game, Clifford, uh, this has been what's going on, and this is why they're 0-6-1. and Inside, as they always naturally call it, the red zone, having a multitude of problems with scoring because of lack of a running attack. And that St. Joe's team had the ball first and goal in their last game and could not score, so they do have some problems as we see Cunningham get the ball here and get tackled by Mike Meyer before he gets uh, two, after he gets about two yards on the play. Second down and eight. Well, what's going to happen right here now is that they're, they're running sweeps and I think what Coach is going to do right now is start to attack this a little quicker. Pursuit is trying to catch up to this. This offensive line, I think, can control the Pumas right now. So we're going to take a, a, a look and see if the philosophy changes with the running game of more straight-on, quick-hitting plays. Second and eight ball is at the 28. Ponder wide to the right. Randano Johnson comes wide right too. Cunningham goes in motion right, but the handoff is to golf. He runs into a wall of Pumas. Led by Mr. Mike Meyer. And this is what I just mentioned. They're going to send Joe from that up back very quick into line of scrimmage. Just get a piece of the defender and let Joe get in and make his way. It's going to be a little thick in there, but he's done a good job of picking his spots and weaving his way through little holes. All those charters in motion right. It was a good play by Meyer to stay put and tackle Mr. Gulf before he got too many yards. Well, as you can see, they got a 4-4 four, four almost. And they almost have 11 men on the line of scrimmage here, as you can see. They're thinking that they're going to run the football, which they are. And what's going to happen here, folks, if they get by this first line of defenders, there's nobody left. <laughs> Joe Gulf, the ball carrier, had it not been for a good tackle by Jeff Tadora. He might have gone all the way on that one. The you know, was the last line of defense. You know, we in recent weeks have not mentioned. Uh, let's take a look at the replay right here. Here's Joe coming through right there. Does a good job picking his way, eluding a couple of tackles right there, spinning and grinding, get three more yards. It's a good time for play action right now to ponder. Joe Golf, of course, the converted defensive player from last year, who's on the verge of scoring a thousand this season. As we see the officials flag throw some premature motion there on the line. And we had some motion that time. Uh, offensive tackle jumped a little bit. Hate to mention those offensive tackles jumping. <laughs> Soft spot your heart, huh? They, they never, I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to bring his name up right now. It's very rare they get that opportunity to get that their name called when they make that good block. And they always seem, when they have a penalty against them, especially a holding penalty, their name is always all over the air. Try to hand the ball up to Cunningham. Maybe picks up two or three yards and runs into a gang of Puma tacklers. Well, that time was an old cross buck that time. Fake one way, come back the other. Uh, they want to try to run the ball. They want to try to control the clock. They figure if they can do that, they're going to win that football game. But right now, I tell you something, play action. Play action might and will work against this Puma defense. Well, they have to get 13 yards to get a first down. Ball is at the Tartar 33, second and 13. Cunningham goes in motion left. 
Friday barks the signals, rolls left, looks left, lets it fly before he gets a tackle, and the ball is caught by Randolph Johnson. He's brought down by Eric Page. Well, Mark Friday's shooting off the guns already. <laughs> I like these athletes now, Clifford. They make one play and they're all shooting off guns and everything else. But it is a good play by Friday. Take a look at here. He's getting pressure on the backside. He stays in there, throws it almost sidearm right in there. Nice catch, almost the first down. Uh, it's probably going to be about third and six inches, a third and a foot. Well, you mentioned Friday being healthy now, and here's a quarterback yes. who's not only a big guy, but has a gun when he can get it off. Oh, he does. There's no question about that. And as, as you could see that time, Cliff, he's rolling to the left-hand side, and for a right hand, it's hard to throw the ball, going to crush your body, and he does a good job of it. Third and inches, Cunningham rolls, rolls right, hand off to Goff, the money man, and he gets the first down. Tackled by Ed Stewart, but not until after he gets the first down yardage. What a, what a nice drive right now going on for the Wayne State offense right now. They had some trouble with some penalties, came right back, overcame that, and have the ball on around the 47-yard line right now. This is the drive where they really want to consume the clock and go down and score a touchdown for it. A little bit of breathing room, trying to get into St. Joe's territory. Ray Potter, the lone wide out to the right side. Cunningham goes in motion left, Friday back, looks to pass, lets the ball fly, intended for golf, but incomplete. And Ed Stewart on the coverage for the Pumas. It's a good play that time. A lot of the, a lot of the offenses across the lands have that play in their playbook. Back comes right through the line of scrimmage. Uh, what defensive coordinators and linebacker coach and defensive line coaches tell these young men is to put a hand on them, slow them up, knock them down, do something. Because this player inevitably is always open coming through that line of scrimmage. Second down and 10, Charlie. Ball is at their own 47-yard line. Again, Ponder wide right. And we got to mention Ponder's name here quickly, Clifford. And there it is. He heard you talking. He throws four ponder, just throws it too far, incomplete, and it'll be third down. And Mark Friday that time really rushed to Clifford, and the ball sailed on him a little bit. This is an out, a five-yard out play that, uh, unless they're playing bump and run on the line of scrimmage, which they weren't, it's really impossible to stop because you do have to respect his speed. Ponder, of course, uh, all-conference last year, one of the leading receivers in the conference this year. Uh, one thing uh, disadvantage he's had this season is that defenses know about him. Exactly. can't sneak up on him. Exactly. And they're looking for this guy to get the ball. Exactly. And this is what you don't really want to be in, folks. Third and 10, third and 11, third and 12. Tough place. Friday rolls right. Looks, he lets it fly. He hits Ponder. There's the man. Catches it on his knees, so no need for a tackle. But he has the first down yardage, a 14-yard gain. They're in St. Joe's territory, first and 10 at the 39. Good job by Ponder that time. As we take a look right now, it's almost a trip set that they cut into over here. And Friday just picks the guy who's open. He's going to go into the zone. Ponder feels real comfortable, pulls up in the zone. You can see there's one, two, three, four defenders there. Ponder finds that open area, gets big, and catches the football. If you talk to the Wayne State coaches, they'll tell you that Ponder runs excellent routes. Yes, sir, and that's why he's been so successful. Exactly, Clifford. And knows to come back to the football, too. Yeah. Knows where the sticks are. Excuse me. Quick handoff to Goff. He is tackled by Ed Stewart. We've called that name a few times. Yes. Well, you know, also, talking with, with the, the head coach of St. Joe, he feels that, Cliff, that the defense has played uh, so much better than the offense. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they, hit, they held Hillsdale to 14 points, and Hillsdale was, uh, I believe, 18 in the nation scoring. So the defense is a capable group of people. They, they're not scoring points, and you can't win football games if you don't score points. And if you spend too much time on that field, field you're exactly. just tired. That and we did game. see that a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? We sure did. Friday hands the ball off. Oh, this is a nice ball. move. Makes a nice move outside and picks up some yardage before finally being brought down by Jeff Tadora. Nice. Gee, this is a cute move, isn't it? Nice little stutter yeah. step there. <laughs> a little stutter step, a little head and shoulders. And you can see why he's going to become the single, single season rushing leader in all-time history of Wayne State. Little dip comes out, puts his head down. Got to protect yourself, Joe, a little bit. You don't want to take those shots on the sideline. 
We mentioned again, this is a former defensive player. Those guys aren't yes. supposed to be able to do that, are they? Well, I tell you what, he did a hell of a job last year on the defense. Once Tough again, linebacker. Once again, third and inches. Ball is at about the 30 of St. Joe's. And again, Goff gets the ball. They give it to the money man, and he gets first down yardage. Tackled once again by that big 44, Ed Stewart. Well, it's just, it's just as we were saying here, Clifford, as I'm taking a look at the clock, there's about a minute left to go in the quarter already. This is only Wayne State's second possession. Uh, this is exactly what Wayne State wants to do, occupy the clock with the offense running the football. When do you know that a team uh, does not have a strong offense? Do you try to wear that defense down and make them tired early? Well, you wear them down with the guy right on the screen right there. <laughs> He's have to look, look at my man in the third, too. He's had 1,104 yards. Joe needs, what, about 200 yards? We'll go to Barry Smays, uh, the man, the number man, for once years and years. Once again, Goff gets the ball. They're trying to get him that 1,000 yards. He'll be the second Wayne State rusher to gain 1,000 yards in the season. This is, uh, once again, second and about sick. A very, very controlled offensive drive they are going with the wind so they have the opportunity to go into the wind i don't know if it's an opportunity but with the ground attack i don't know if it's going to cause them much problems tartars will get off at least one more play before the end of the quarter flag is down with a handoff goes to cunningham oh, he's hit and fumbled and it's picked up by a defensive player chad moxley takes it runs left tries to flip it back what is and they say he's out of bounds and <laughs> what is what is chad doing chad's all excited <laughs> Chad knows he's on TV. Okay, now the flag was thrown on the play. And the one official staying back there. Let's see if it's it's offside. Offside. Wayne State. Yeah. Charters. So this play will hold up. Well, they got offsides the wrong way. So exactly. He's the offside offsides. Against St. Joseph was the call offsides, and boy, a fortuitous flag Ooh. for the Tartars. <laughs> so now I, I... We'll be back with more Tartar <laughs> football after this message. If I thought that no one cared about the things I do in life, well, I'd still care about working hard and making it turn out right. Made in America, that means a lot to me. Oh, I believe in America and American quality. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. At Budweiser, we salute with pride what all Americans know in their hearts. The American worker's commitment to quality is stronger today than ever. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Nothing beats the quality of the American spirit. Well, the Wayne State Tartars benefit from an offside penalty that uh, would have uh, that, that wiped out a forced fumble by St. Joe's, picked up by Vic number 99, Moxley. As you see, Cunningham had the ball here, was running right, a good tackle, forced a fumble, and Look Moxley picks fella. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the big fella. He's rumbling. He's, ru he's running. He says, I'm running so fast, I'm going to run out of bounds now. He's going to run out of bounds. Now he's going to throw the ball backwards. There we go. The old jump pass. It looked like a jump shot, I tell you. It looked like a basketball shot. <laughs> Let's take another look at it right now. He's holding the ball. See what, folks, right now? You can see the ball. He's trying to tuck the ball away, but he doesn't get it tucked away yet. So Wayne State gets another break, and what do they do? Go to the money man, Joe Goff, over the right side. He's still going. Finally brought down by Mike Belong, but not until after he picks up first down yardage. A flag was thrown on the play, and we'll see what that flag is all about. This, looks, this is a holding area right now where the flag is thrown. Illegal block. Once again, uh, teams that have suspect records, Clifford, always along with those teams are a multitude of penalties. And as we can see, once again, as we did see with St. Joe's, inside the red zone, 
penalties, mistakes, and here it is with Wayne State also. You cannot make, this is where the discipline has to take over, Cliff. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. The score, Wayne State 0, St. Joe's 0. We'll be back with more Tartar football after this local message. This is an effort to reach men and women who served in the United States Armed Forces. It concerns benefits reserved exclusively for honorably discharged veterans aged 30 to 75. Please. You can't end the quarter on a penalty? Well, I'm just from saying, that's what he's doing. Well, we thought it was the end of the first quarter here, but the officials are signaling that there has to be another play before the end of the first quarter can come. Now, the people in the press booth and others are trying to figure it out. Bottom line is the Wayne State Tartars are still playing the last play of the first quarter. Second down and about two yards at the 22 of St. Joe's and a quick handoff to Joe Goff, who gains some yardage, finally is brought down by Jason Nutter. Maybe Stanley Edwards down on the sideline was going to uh, make it on the sideline. He's going to straighten this all out for us. And so now we do have the end of the first quarter. As the players uh, head to the other end of the field, Wayne State does pick up enough yardage for a first down. And now we will go to uh, our local break, and we'll return with more Wayne State football. Friends age 30 to 75. Please use the toll-free number to respond. Call now for free information on a veterans-only life insurance plan that costs just $1 a week. When you qualify, you lock in the highest possible benefit amount available to you. These veterans' life insurance benefits are guaranteed never to go down. You are eligible if you serve during peacetime or war, active duty or reserves, or any branch of service. Call now, and you'll also get a free guide to veterans' benefits that explains government benefits you may be entitled to collect. Only veterans, their spouses and widows aged 30 to 75 qualify for this exclusive offer. Term life insurance for just $1 a week. Don't wait. Call this toll-free number now for your free information and free guide to veterans' benefits from Veterans Life Insurance Company. Through the shrouded mist, it is coming. The final phase of an accident of nature. Nothing human can have this in its means of life. It is unexplainable, unbelievable, and uncontrollable. You can't see it in the darkness or hear it in the silence, but you can feel its presence and sense the danger. Ah. Mutant. Don't go out there. It's time has come. Let me! Let me! Mutant. Any one of us could be one of them. There is no place left to run. We're back. The Wayne State Tartars have no score in this game. The St. Joe's Pumas have no score. But the Tartars do have a first and ten at the St. Joe 17. Stanley Edwards is on the sideline. Stan, maybe you can explain for us the end of the first quarter and what you see down there. What happened was that a play cannot end on the penalty, and what the officials say we will have here is an untimed down. So when it had a penalty on the end of the last quarter, if, uh, the quarter cannot end. They ran it down, and this play here will be an untimed down. And we head back up to you guys. Joe Goff gets a handoff, goes right, cuts back, gains some yardage. He's taught, brought down by Chad Moxley. It's going to be very close to a first down. Just like all backs, Cliff, it seems it's, it's almost funny how good backs want the football, and the more they carry the football, the better they get. 
Well, golf again, and I've mentioned it twice, but here's a guy who played defense. Yeah, he has good running back skills. Does a good job with that cutback, as you can see, folks. That shows that he has good vision of the field. Good size, six feet, 210, sophomore. Touchdown saving tackle by Moxley. First and goal. Chargers Friday takes the ball. Quick drop off. Avoids a tackler, but finally he's brought down. Can't avoid big number 64, well, Jim McDonald. There's a penalty in the end zone, and I'm going to say defensive holding on. They were held Friday, right positive. Tackled for a loss by number 54, Kevin Coleman. Let's take a look at this penalty. Ray Ponder did a nice a job of getting inside on a defender, and he had no alternative but to grab him. Does he call it? I don't know. Quarterback Mark Friday, Friday smartly held on to the ball, didn't let it go. Holding is a call. Skip Mackles is right. Penalty was defensive holding against St. Joseph. So look, what are we going to do? We can't get it. We don't get a shot here. Friday's looking. See right there, folks, he has Ponder, but Ponder's being held, so he can't throw the football, so he comes out. And he's looking for Ponder again. Ponder's open, but the pressure gets to him. The house falls in. We got to give Big Kevin Tolman the credit for that tackle in the backfield, but the penalty takes precedence. It is first and goal Tartars. And the ball is at the St. Joe's four. As you can see in the, the first half, the Tartars leading four, first downs line. five to three. Yardage 80 to 42. They've dominated in every category, including penalties. And it looks like they might be knocking on the door to score a touchdown here. We'll see. First and goal. Ball is at the four. Ponder wide right. Golf in the backfield. Quick handoff to Joe Golf. Goes over the right side. Touchdown, Wayne State Tartars. A four-yard touchdown run. Joe Golf over the right tackle. And you know something? This offensive line is doing a good job up there. And we'll take it. And we'll allude to that as we go on. These big fellas are doing a heck of a job opening holes over there. That was a fifth, a five-yard touchdown run. They're going to give him credit for five yards on the touchdown run. And the Wayne State drive leads to six points. Good job on that offensive line. So the Tartars are the first to draw blood. They're on the scoreboard. And we have Nick Palompit attempting the extra point. The kick is up and good. And the Tartars lead 7-0. But we'll be back with more Charter football after this message. We always thought we knew a lot about Bud. Great taste, king of beers, that kind of stuff. But these guys... Budweiser? It's Beachwood aged. Whoa! Naturally carbonated. Takes a long time to brew. Where'd they learn this stuff? Some brewmaster information pipeline? Long forgotten, perhaps, deep in their collective subconscious? No, uh, I think it was on TV. Here comes the king, here comes the big number one. To understand Asia, you have to understand its customs, its mystery, its people. You have to know what makes a good impression and what offends. For over 40 years, we've been learning about Asia. So in addition to our convenient schedules, we can give you something no other U.S. airline can. The knowledge that comes after 40 years of helping people do business in Asia. The incredible eyeglass factory. Buy one, get one free. Choose one pair of top quality glasses for $59.95 and get a second pair free. And for a limited time, bifocals are no additional charge. That's right, two pairs, $59.95 single vision or bifocals, no additional charge. At the eyeglass factory, buy one pair of top quality contacts for $59.95, get a second pair of contacts and a pair of eyeglasses free. Buy one, get one free, $59.95. Only at the eyeglass factory. Go ahead, compare. Well, in that drive, Joe Golf, number 22, went over 1,000 yards for the season, and he capped off that drive with a five-yard touchdown run, Skip. Well, let's take a look at that. Look at this offensive line. We've got backs blocking. we got everybody blocking for Joe. Joe goes over 1,000 yards on that carry right now. He's looking, making sure that the official knows he went over the goal line. The scoring drive, 17 plays, 78 yards, 7 minutes and 28 seconds. Time of possession, and Joe goes over five-yard line. That's 728 That's a drive. may be the big stat in that oh, drive. Absolutely. To hold the ball seven and a half minutes. And to overcome a couple of penalties to come back, and naturally, the penalty against St. Joe's 
for offsides that they had to fumble. It looks like they're going to get the ball on a 30, but they were offside, so Wayne State retained the football. You hear a lot about Big Mo, and uh, they would have the ball. Fumble. fumble. The kickoff was fumbled by the St. Joe's player. It was a short kick. It didn't reach the intended uh, kickoff returners, and I think he was surprised to get it, so the fumble comes, and right now we're waiting for him to unscramble and see what it is. The officials indicate Wayne State football. The Tartars recover and kick off fumble, and they have the ball in excellent field position. First and 10, it'll be at the St. Joe's 31-yard line. And the fumble recovered by Scott Damaski. Well, I think it's Tolman, number 54, for St. Joe's. He's watching TV. He's got the hand up. He wants a fair catch. But another guy comes in. We can't see his number right now. He goes. He tries to get it. We can't see his number. He's watching TV, though, with that fair catch. He's doing the right thing. But his own teammate knocks him off the football. His hands were obviously cold out there. He was, <laughs> he was ready to hit somebody. First and 10, Wayne State Tartars ball is at the uh, St. Joe 32, and they have a chance to score again very quickly. Fakes the handoff right, and Friday back, he tries to get away, but he loses yards on the play. Big number 90, Mike Ballard gets a hand on him and drags him down. Ballard does a nice job that time because he has somebody blocking him, and he reaches over with that big paw and still might gets a hold of Friday. Friday tries to get away, but to no avail. Well, Stanley Edwards is on the sideline. Stan, what are you seeing down there? Hey, let's... Hey, this guy, uh, Joe Goff, is one of, is my kind of guy. <laughs> Hurt his AC joint on the touchdown run. He came off the field and he was carrying it. He severely bruised it, but he told the the, uh, the uh, sport, the medicine guy, he said, listen, I'm not coming out this game. This game is too important. Boy, that's my kind of guy. Back upstairs to you guys. <laughs> A tough Stanley Edwards type guy. Well, the Tigers lost yards in that place. Second and 14. Friday rolls left, looks left, throws the ball. Tough it throw. is incomplete. He tried to get the ball in there to Tony Hawk. But excellent coverage by Ruben Seals makes it second down and uh, 13 yards for we the might, We might have roughing the passer, maybe. Flag is down. And it looks like face masking may be the call. I thought there was a shot on Friday, too. Let's take a look at it. Oh, this is a big one. This is a major. This is 15. Must be the face masking call against Friday. Maybe when he took that shot, he took yeah. the shot in the face mask as well. I like when those officials could start with them little baby steps. <laughs> then they start running a little bit. You know they're walking off 15. <laughs> <laughs> so the Tartars pick up some real estate on the penalty. It'll be first and 10 ball at about the 20 yard line of St. Joe's. Score is Wayne State 7, St. Joe 0, 12-59 left in the second quarter. Friday back, short drop, let it fly, ball is caught by Ponder, and he goes inside the 10-yard line before being chased out by Brian Melkai. And there's another cheap shot going on. St. Joe's starting to lose their belong. Once again, number 90 gets caught hitting somebody in the back after the play. Let's take a look and see if we can get Belog. We can't see this. Here's Ponder does a nice job, good throw against the fist you see a shot almost on the outside and frustration starting to set in at st joe's frustration by the way that was let's, jason let's nutter who take uh, a shot here her out. coming out here on number 90. it's tough to see that time that's a good throw by friday that time personal foul so that's going to be tacked on half the distance from the point of and where ponder went out of bounds folks Tartars start off in the second quarter where they ended up the first quarter, first and goal, ball at the four-yard line. Yeah, St. Joe's called a timeout, I believe, to try to get this thing together here again before uh, frustrations and uh, coaches a little unhappy with what's going on. on the well, field. we'll see if the Tartars can score a touchdown when we return to Tartar football after this message. Obviously, these guys knew a lot about Bud, but was it possible they learned it all on TV? I think it was on TV. That Bud, that's beer. We watch TV. We've never seen this stuff. Budweiser beer, the king is second to none. Exclusive Beechwood aging gives you a taste and drinkability you find only in Budweiser. I mean, how could we have missed it, Paul? Well, maybe you guys should get up. For my money, I'd go with a proven winner every time, Ford Taurus. 
The 93s are here. Now lease a new Ford Taurus GL for as low as $223 a month. That's $223 a month for only 24 months. Now lease the best for less. Register to win a trip for two to the 93 Rose Bowl and Parade. See your Metro Detroit Ford dealer for details. Now, are you ready to check out the proven winner? Taurus at your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. See any of the 31 Metro Detroit Ford dealers. When Russ Beeler sold his millionth piece of original recipe, he had a Colonel Lookalike contest. How better to celebrate the world-famous original recipe chicken? It's what all the lookalikes ate, including the winner, whose resemblance was uncanny. And now get the Colonel's Dozen for just $9.99. Twelve pieces of chicken, large mashed potatoes with gravy, and a large coleslaw. A meal for your entire family. The Colonel's Dozen, only $9.99 in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. The Wayne State Tartars knocking at the door once again. First and goal at the St. Joe's 4. They lead it 7 to nothing. A quick handoff to Joe Golf as the official throws the flag, and we'll see what this penalty is about. However, we have a penalty flag on the play. It seemed like somebody was across that line of scrimmage very quickly. Mike Belong made the quick tackle on Joe Golf, but the flag is thrown, and this one's going to be against the Tartar skip. Well, that's why he was across the line of scrimmage, because he saw movement. And as a, a defensive ball player, he's taught to move on movement. So he's doing all the things the coach is teaching him during the course of the week. So now they decline the penalty, so it will be second and goal ball at the six. Well, as I mentioned, Coach Reagan has a lot of confidence in this defense. They've played very well, especially in this type of situation, goal line situation. At this close, uh, why give him four chances instead of three? Exactly. That's the thinking. Friday gets a quick pass out. He hits number eight, and it's a touchdown. Wayne State Tartars, the pass from Friday to Kevin Whitfield, and a six-yard touchdown pass for the Tartars. Well, this is the this is a play that Notre Dame ran nine million years ago. It's the pick play down on the goal on the down on the goal line, folks. I'm having a little trouble with that. And what occurred, there, the pick didn't occur, but the defender has a hard time covering that man coming out of the slot. Excellent play to run down on goal line. Celebration in the stands at Wayne State Stadium as the Tartars go off to a 13 to nothing lead. Once again, Nick Palombic set to attempt the extra point. There's a snap, it's down, it's up. The official signal, it is good. And the score, the Tartars 14, the Pumas zero. And we'll be back with more Wayne State football action after this message. The incredible eyeglass factory. Buy one, get one free. Choose one pair of top quality glasses for $59.95 and get a second pair free. And for a limited time, bifocals are no additional charge. That's right, two pairs, $59.95 single vision or bifocals, no additional charge. At the eyeglass factory, buy one pair of top quality contacts for $59.95, get a second pair of contacts and a pair of eyeglasses free. Buy one, get one free, $59.95. Only at the eyeglass factory. Go ahead, compare. When Russ Beeler sold his millionth piece of original recipe, he had a Colonel Lookalike contest. How better to celebrate the world-famous original recipe chicken? It's what all the lookalikes ate, including the winner, whose resemblance was uncanny. And now get the Colonel's Dozen for just $9.99. Twelve pieces of chicken, large mashed potatoes with gravy, and a large coleslaw. A meal for your entire family. The Colonel's Dozen, only $9.99 in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. Mint condition, good condition, binders, wax packs, sleeves. How can anybody sort this sports cards hobby out? With the ABCs of Sports Trading Cards, the first comprehensive videotape on card collecting. Now you too can know all the facts that have built collections worth thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Call 313-377-8680. It's a perfect gift and only $19.95. Call 313-377-8680. Have Discover, MasterCard, or Visa ready. Call 313-377-8680. Here we are back at here we are back at, uh, at at the field. As Mark Friday threw the touchdown pass and came to the sideline, a lot of teammates were congratulating him, patting him on the shoulder. He fell straight to his knees. I think he's got a severe shoulder bruise himself. We'll look at, keep a close eye on that and see if he can come back here and continue in the first half. Back up to you guys. Well, thank you, Stan Edlers, the, the Edwards. The score is Wayne State 14, St. Joe's 0. Kickoff goes this time to Williams. Takes it at about the 10-yard line. Makes his move. 
Tries to get by a couple of targets, but it's no doing. And he picks up uh, maybe 13 yards to get back over. Yes. Brian Williams. We'll get back to Brian Williams. Let's take a look at this Wayne State touchdown once again here on the replay. Look at Friday. Nice pass. Right there. Only he could catch the football. Goes right in. Touchdown. As you see, comes out of that backfield, out of that wing. Kevin Whitfield that time. Excellent, excellent play. Whitfield, only a sophomore, and the Tartar coaching staff has uh, very, very high uh, expectations of this young man. Get a little camera on Mark that time. Ten. Fakes the handoff, chased by Gozuski, gets away from him, continues to roll left, and gets the pass over to Williams, who was wide open by himself, and drops the ball. Well, that time Williams is worrying about getting the ball up the field before he catches it. And that's what happened that time. Second and ten now for the Pumas. Wayne stayed four plays, 32 yards on that possession, and it ended up in a touchdown, a pass from Friday to Whitfield. You see Coach Brian Van Gorder rallying his troops on the sideline, talking strategy. This game's still far from over. No, but it's going in the direction that Wayne State wants it to go. There's no question about that. Of all the games I've done, I know we call a 14 and nothing. So it's a nice feeling for Wayne State fans and alumni. Billings went in motion right. Jordy comes that way. Throws a pass to Billings. And he drops the pass too. Same results in two plays. Yes, you know something. Is, it's, you know something. You show. You can see on this play really, folks, how TV has an impact on young ball plays. Here's Jenny. He's worrying about his feet in bounds. Watch this. He put, looks around. He looks around. He's up. You gotta catch the ball. You, you, you didn't do the most important thing you gotta do, son. You gotta catch your football. You think he knew he was right in front of that camera? Yeah. There, oh, Skip? sure. He's got his feet. He's looking down. He's doing everything else. And he says, "Oh my God, I dropped the ball." Well, that makes it third down and ten for the Pumas. They have two wide men left. Once again, not good clock time management. Uh, they've only run off about 12, 14 seconds in this drive. And this guy's thrown for his life, throwing up ducks. He lets the play. It's intercepted by Abby Herbert. And Herbert is still on his feet. He's going he's down at the 40-yard line. He's finally tripped up by Daryl McWilliams, the tight end, but an interception for the Turners. And once again, Wayne State has the ball in Puma territory. Well, as we mentioned during the open clip, here's the prime example, Jordy. A marker was thrown, too. Just now, the marker was thrown. We'll see what that's about, Skip. Well, we got coaches on the field, which is a no-no. So what's going to see this year? A lot of personal fouls against Wayne State. So hopefully this is not a dead ball foul, so it's first and 25 and it occurred during the run back, but it almost looks like it is a dead ball foul. Barry Smith is giving me the, the up and down, so I know it is a dead ball foul, so Wayne State's going to be looking at a first and 25, which you really don't, there's not many plays in your playbook to start that drive off with. But let's get back to Jordy. As we mentioned during the open, Clifford, this is a sophomore mistake once again, throwing the ball up for grabs uh, when we, you certainly don't want to do that at this point in the game. And you'll see that the ball looks more like a Look wounded this, this duck once it gets up there. He twisted his wrist right there, and the wide receiver's got to play defended now. Brian Wayne, he's going up. He's got to knock this ball down. If he doesn't catch it, nobody catches it. Look at this. Cunningham running wide left. He gets around the defense. Cuts back inside. And finally, he's brought down, but he gained 10 yards on the play. A big chunk of that 15 they lost on the penalty. The one thing you can see about these Wayne State runners is that they don't like to go out of bounds. They're stopping, coming back, waiting for these offensive linemen to come downfield. And I did say that we are going to mention their names and their heights and their weights and their schools and whatever else we can name about Clifford because these guys are doing a heck of a job. Take a look at here. They get the ball in the wrong hand, though. There you go. Listen to Skip. Get it in the right hand. There we go. Switch it back. Well, these that's guys that's listen so to Skip. <laughs> Second down and about uh, 13 or 14 now. Friday quick handoff to golf and... St. Joe smells out the play. Big fella number 90's hurt right there. Mike Bullock. Bullock's been in a lot of action today, Clifford. He has. He's been involved in a lot of plays. And, uh, 6'4", 240, junior. 
really has played a good game considering uh, they've been on the field so much. Well, once again, you mentioned that earlier, and that's what's happened. We did see that in the last couple of games that we did do with Wayne State, that the defense was on the field. It's nice to see the offense on the field. I misspoke earlier. I said second and 13. It was second and 15, and there's no gain on that play, meaning it is third and 15 for the Tartars. We'll be back with more Wayne State football action after this message. Since Buddy's originated the deep dish pizza in Detroit over 40 years ago... Lovely! Don't you ever change! There have been a lot of imitations. <laughs> but year after year, Buddy's is consistently voted number one. Excuse me. Which just goes to show you... Mercy! There's still nothing like the original. Rawr. Buddy's Pizza. Detroit's original deep dish pizza. And I mean that sincerely. The Wayne State Tartars have a 14-0 lead over the St. Joseph Pumas here at Wayne State Stadium. Wayne with the ball once again, third and 15. Ball is at the St. Joe 44. Honda has single coverage up on top, folks. Oh! Ooh, Ooh that hurts from up here, Clifford. It really did. Before Friday could get the ball off, he got a big hit from Aubrey McCoy. In the back. And his shoulder's hurting him, folks. He got one of the stingers. He's got a, a pinched nerve, it looks like, in his arm. Loss of six more yards on that sack. That'll make it fourth and 20 water charters. Ball is at midfield. So what looked like perhaps another scoring opportunity for Wayne State turns into uh, a chance to punt the ball away to St. Joseph. Into the win, I might add. St. Joe's coming out after it. And they got, they have a shoot. Good job. Eric Burton looked like he was going to be tackled. Oh. Fakes the tackle out, gets a good ball away. Ball is down at about the 10 yard line. A 39 yard punt, and considering what he had to do to get to get the punt off, that was an excellent kick. This is better than excellent. This saves a lot, a lot of problems for Wayne State. Let's take a look at this right now. They're coming out after him, as I said, the snap's a little high. He fakes the first defender out comes on there has presence of mind to kick it again and it gets downed on a 10-yard line look at this this is a great effort this is an absolute great effort he gets it away so it's first and 10 for st joe's run, run, run. quick handoff to eastwood and he gets maybe a tough fumble the ball is picked up by williams but he's coming down the right sideline he's got one time to beat he gets by oh Touchdown saving tackle. Excellent play. Rob Zeno from behind grabs him at the ankles and a tackle after the fumble recovery. This is a heck of an effort by Rob Zeno. Boy, a lot of action on that play. A lot of different things going on. And uh, bottom line, a big game for St. Joe's. They'll be first and 10 at the Wayne State 39, but that could have very easily been a Puma touchdown. Yes, and one of the cha changes in recent years in college football that you can advance a fumble like this. Watch this. He's going to pick it up. Everybody's walking around. Mr. Williams says, uh-oh, let's go. Hot potato. Let's go with it. I don't think Mr. Williams thought he could get, get caught from behind. Right, well, Rob Zeno proved him wrong. First and ten. Ball is handed off very quickly to Al Delps. And Joe Golazuski gets the tackle for the Tartars. Let's take another look at that. Look at this effort. Rob Zeno. He's trying to strip him right now of the ball. He says, let me get let me get a piece of his foot here so we knock him down. That one foot is what saved the you know, touchdown. Exactly. Excellent job by that young man. Saved the touchdown. There was no gain on the last play for St. Joseph, so it'll be second down and ten. Ball is at the charter 39. <laughs> With about eight minutes and 24 seconds left, that quick screen pass is incomplete. Yeah, this is a good play. He just throws the ball above Williams' head that time. Darren King that time was putting some pressure on, got into his face a little bit, threw the ball too high and over his head. Williams tried to make a good attempt to catch it, couldn't do it. And uh, take this with you, Brian. He's lucky there was no Wayne State defender around when he exactly. deflected that ball. It was very catchable. 
But here, once again, they just have problems when they have golden opportunities that they just can't take advantage of St. Joe's. And that's why they're 0-6-1. 824 before halftime as Williams comes in motion from his wide out left spot. Jordy back, rolling right, looks long, lets the ball fly. Oh, my goodness. He hits Aaron Cobb in the numbers, and Cobb just drops him. What is that old setting hit him in a bad spot, huh? Todd Hanusha, the Chargers, was in the area, but he couldn't have stopped that pass. He might have made the tackle. Just a drop ball by Aaron Cobb. Temp is uh, starting to flare on both ends of the sides of this football here. Rick Williams, number 87, the tight end that we mentioned during the open, he's saying he's getting pushed around. He wants a flag from the official. Once again, that's frustration that has set in. Well, in St. Joseph, you have a team that is 0-6-1. They, they need a victory. They need a victory bad. Uh, looks like this one's slipping away from the world. Like, they need a couple of first downs. And at 4th and 10 on the 40, they're going for it. This shows you a team that... Jordy lets it fly, rolls right. This time he hits Cobb in the numbers, and Cobb holds on. Todd Hanush makes the tackle, but not until after a big pickup. A 25-yard pickup from Jordy to Cobb. This is grasping his straws right now, and they come through it. Jordy does a good time. The reason he has a lot of time, they're doing a good job of securing him when he's rolling out right. Has a good field of vision, and having the receivers run from left to right, they're wide open. As you can see, Jordy, three of nine for 41 yards, one interception. First and 10 for St. Joseph's. Ball is at the target 15. Pitch back to Delps. Tom Beer. Beer hits him in the backfield. If we've mentioned his, he's the leading tackler on the Wayne State football team. Here's a guy that comes to work every single Saturday. And as we mentioned, and we keep on mentioning this offensive St. Joe's, now they're in the red zone. The field is now only 30 yards long for them. They can't run their passing offense effectively, especially into this zone. So what they have to do is run the football, and they can't run the football. So it's a problem. Second down and nine. Williams and Scheidt were wide left to the left. Pass from Jordy intended for Scheidt. Flags are down. Tony Hawk was on the coverage for the Charters, and the officials throw the flag, Skip. I don't know about this. You know, not trying to be pro Wayne State, but Tony Hawk is trying to come at the football, and the offensive ball player comes into him as much as Tony's going for the football. Hopefully, we get a good shot at this. But any, any time, excuse me, any time that happens, the call's definitely going to go to the offensive ball player. Ball receiver, I should say. Coach Brian Van Gorder. Let's take a look at this one. right now. Good protection once again. Watch Hawk come in, and I'll take that all back. That's interference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give Tony Hawk the benefit of the doubt, folks. I can't do it. We have a convert to a, a convert to instant replay here. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm trying to plead the case. I was trying to play Perry Mason there for a minute, who never lost one. First and goal, St. Joe. Ball is at the two of Wayne State. Williams and Scheidt wide left. Kuma's had the ball first and goal last week and couldn't score. He had off to Eastwood, and the Wayne State line he makes the tackle. Run. This has got to be terribly frustrating for Coach Reagan and his staff that this happened like three or four times, Cliff, that they could not get the ball in across that famous goal line. Four of their games, they could have really had four victories at this point. And doesn't that create a psychological uh, sure uh, barrier, too, when you get that close and can't get well, it? Well, when your offensive line can't get it done for you, then you start, you start questioning things. Second and goal for the Pumas. Williams starts wide right. Goes in motion all the way to the left side. He holds on the ball, gives it to Delps, and they lose more yards. First one in there was Marty Moranek. And so we go to third and goal now as they continue to lose yardage. They're back at around the six-yard line. It's going to be interesting now what they do here. Let's take a look at this. Marty does a good job getting up the field, so they have to come inside to get pursuit, get pursuit a shot at the ball carrier. He does his job to the letter of the degree that the coach wants him to do it to. Jordy, Excellent job. Jordy pitched the ball before any of those defensive players had committed. It is now third and goal. Ball is at the six. Scheidt and Williams wide left. 
Jordy fakes the handoff, looks left, lets the pass fly in the end zone. There's no white jerseys back there. Good. That's a smart play on Jordy. If he did anything like that play, he was getting heat from King again. So what he did was throw the ball out of the end zone and look for the three up on it. Get, get your team on the scoreboard. He throws it away, so they start first and goal. And they'll be lucky now if they come away with three. I don't know. I got letters and degrees and everything else I'm yelling out here. <laughs> I'm getting carried away myself here at the, the last home football game of the Tigers this year. Russ Thompson with a 22-yard field goal attempt. It is up and it's good. And St. Joseph is on the scoreboard. Wayne State still leads 14-3. Wayne State. It's a pretty good drive, though, for St. Joe. You know, and, and, and a really gutsy call on that third and 25 after the receiver drops the ball. He comes right back to him. Really gutsy call. Fourth and, what was it, fourth and about 15 at the 40-yard line. Excellent football call. Well, Skip, you know, we'd like to thank the people at Hilton Suites in Auburn Hills for supplying hotel rooms for our out-of-town Wayne State football crew members. If you need a room or a suite for your out-of-town guests or a weekend getaway, call Debbie Marshall and her staff at the Hilton Suites in Auburn Hills. The number is 334-2222. Maybe Coach Brian Van Gorder might want to take his tartars to the Hilton Suites uh, after winning three in a row, assuming that they can hold on to this lead yeah. here, Skip. There's a lot of people that are looking at that weekend getaway business. That that sounds like a nice deal down there. I'll tell you what, it's walking distance from the Silver Dome. I want to take in a Lion game. Well, here's the kickoff. The kickoff is taken by Randono Johnson. He cuts right, goes back left. He's still on his feet. And he's on his way to the 40-yard line. He cuts back, reverses again, goes back to the middle of the field, and finally brought down by Kevin Toman and the rest of St. Joe. I'm not so sure he didn't run farther east and west than he did north and south. Well, you know something, I, this is, a, a, once again, we mentioned these Wayne State backs and runners and receivers giving that extra effort, and here it is right now. He could have, he makes a great move here, could have went out of bounds, could have went out of bounds, but he stops trying to look for more yardage. Excellent, excellent deal here. And I think Stanley alluded to this earlier during the Open, Clifford, that they're playing for pride right now. They're doing a job. They're trying to put this Wayne State football program on the map right now. And you can see they're going in the right direction. Flag is down on the play. First and ten. The ball is handed off to Whitfield. And we got motion. We got offensive motion on that play right there, folks. The official indicates it is a legal motion against Wayne State. It's amazing, Friday's back in there after he got that little burner, as they're called, that got a little hit on his arm right there and seemed like he got a nerve hit that time, but he's back in the game. He's, uh, if for this team to progress, he has to come out and be the leader, Clifford. Well, we have five minutes and 19 seconds left in the first half. St. Joseph finally gets on the board. They went 10 plays for 87 yards. They settled for a field goal, though it's one point skip. They were first and goal at about the Wayne State two. Chargers have the ball now. Finally hands the ball up quickly to Joe Goff, who finds a hole in the middle. He has the first down yards, and then some finally wrestled down by Jason Nutter. Is that quick hitter again? Gain of 18 yards on the play. Excellent run by Joe Goff. And what they want to do, as you mentioned, with the five minutes left to go on the clock, they want to use the clock to score a touchdown and go into the clubhouse here, 21 to 3. Look at this. This is a good. It's got a nice running style. Always looking for the open area. Got to hit him. Got to knock him down. He just doesn't go down with an arm tackle. 4:46 on the clock. First and 10. Tartars ball is at the St. Joe 45. Friday lets his ball go quickly, and he hits Ray Ponder out in the left flat. Tackle made by Eric Bain. Ray Ponder's talking a little bit right now, and he should be talking because uh, you can't stop that. <laughs> now, when those guys talk on the field, what do they say to each other, Skip? Well, they <laughs> are you having a nice day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Ray's talking, and uh, I'm going to do this all day long to you. You're going to have to come up here. So 21's going to come on up, and Ray's going to go by him. 
course, at Michigan State, Skip Mackles never talked to me no, about it on the field. Uh, I was always uh, getting beat up. Friday gives it to Whitfield, who started left, goes in motion right in the backfield, and picks up what looks like first down yardage, gain of six yards, make it five yards on the play, before he's brought down by Jim Hilbert. Whitfield was a little excited two plays ago on the same exact play where he had a nice game. This time he got it done right, went on the proper count, and now it's another first down to change the movement. We should mention, too, Skip, today was academic day here oh, at Wayne yes. State. The Wayne State Charter athletes who are on the honor roll were honored uh, before the game, and their parents were honored. That's certainly what an important nice deal. thing. Exactly. The student athlete. Through Wayne State to uh, emphasize academics and athletics. Yeah. That's why you went here, Clifford. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Flag is thrown. Joe Goff gets the ball, and uh, he's wrestled out of bounds, but it looks as if we're going to have another call against the Turner's emotion penalty. We'll see what happens. Looks like St. Joe jumped all together that somebody either drew him off or they were off sides and soft sides St. Joe. My mistake. One of the uh, St. Joe players was indicating he was drawn off sides, but the official doesn't buy it. And it's an offside penalty against the Pumas. Well, uh, that's a... Uh, that's the thing his defensive linemen like to do. They're always pointing the finger at the other guy. <laughs> the score is Wayne State 14, St. Joseph's 3. We have four minutes and four seconds left until halftime. Darter's ball first and five now at the 30-yard line. Again, they're in St. Joseph's territory, trying to get back on the scoreboard before halftime. Ponder wide left. Dunstan Cunningham goes in motion left and is given the ball, but he's hit in the backfield by the big linebacker Jim Hilbert. He's called his name a few times today, too. Absolutely. Loss of three yards on that play. It'll be second and eight now. Friday's indicating right now to coach and go to what he needs to get done. He's almost signaling in probably through quarterback meetings through the course of the week. They're on the same wavelengths of what plays they want to call in certain distance and downs. Good to have that communication between the coach and the, the quarterback. On the wide right. And necessary. Whitfield to the left. Golf, of course, in the backfield and a quick handoff to Golf. Ball, fumble, he hits hit and there's a fumble. And it's recovered by St. Joseph's. Shortly after Goff got the ball, he was hit in the backfield, and the ball just squirted out, pounced upon by a Puma, and Wayne State, hoping to score before halftime, is not going to do it. Eric Page with the fumble recovery. Well, it's a little thick in there. It's tough to see what occurred with all the movement up front. I don't know if Joe Goff got the football cleanly or not, and uh, we're not going to see it. But it was uh, a very, very big play for St. Joe's defense once again, who just keeps this team around, doesn't it, Clifford? They really do. They have 71 yards to go for a touchdown. Three minutes and nine seconds left before halftime. Boy, that would really give them some momentum going in at halftime. As you can see a big pile of now. The flags are thrown here in live action. We've had quite a few flags thrown this game. Well, what they did, they do some more, uh, some of the old Dallas Cowboy movement of that up, that little bounce the linemen do, and then he's having a little different cadence at the line of scrimmage, and they have done that in the past, but the center wasn't snapping the ball. If he did that three or four times, he would have had Wayne State offside. Nice to start first and five. Sure is. Ball is at the 34-yard line. Jordy back, fakes the handoff, lets it fly, looking for Williams. He's got him. Tackled by Tony Hawk, but he's close to that first down marker. Tony Hawk that time came up and was close. Playing Williams very tightly, and then as the ball was snapped, backpedaled off about 10 yards off. Hawk knew there was some business going to be done over here, and uh, there was business done, and you can take a look at this throw this time. It is this a first down. Is, this is a major league throw. Pick up some yards on the play. It's at the 46, first and 10. Two minutes, 52 seconds left and until halftime. Williams in motion on the right side. Jordy back, makes the handoff, rolls right. Looks down to Williams. He lets it go, and it's overthrown. Yeah, that's, you're not going to get Tony Hawk biting on that too many times. What they try to do is they 
bring him in motion. They come with Williams, and then they try to give him a quick in, and then he's going to go up and turn it up into an up pattern, and that time he wasn't biting on it at all. First of all, the play took entirely too much time to run. Coach Brian Van Gorder hoping his defense can keep them off the scoreboard until halftime at least. Second and 10 St. Joseph's. Ball is at the Puma 46. Everybody's wide right. They pass it. They pass it. Snap and the roll is right. Looking to see who he's going to find down there. And he's hit and gets the pass off complete to Williams. Rashawn Hardy makes the tackle. It's short of the first down. It appears to be short of the first down, but an excellent throw by Jordy. Well, as we know, that Williams leads the conference in receptions, so it's no surprise on these important downs that Gordy's going. Jordy's going to Williams. They got a problem with the clock now. They're 45 yards away from scoring a touchdown. Under two minutes now, clock running, and they do have to still get this first down with a bad rushing attack. Third and inches, they're in Wayne State territory at the Charter 45, quick handoff. <laughs> Rob Cristenzio does have the first down for St. Joseph's. Darren King with the tackle for the Charters. Less than two minutes now, 154. And a first down, but as Skip Mackles mentioned, over 40 yards to go before they can get in the end zone for a touchdown. I should mention, I believe, that uh, St. Joe did take one timeout on the one Wayne State drive, so they should have two timeouts left, and uh, they will come into play in this last minute and 54 seconds. Now everybody's wide left for St. Joseph's. Jordy over the center. Calls out the signals. Snap, he rolls left, looking long. Throws the ball in there. And it's complete to number 85, Aaron Cobb. Ebby Herbert was there on the coverage. And the clock should stop on the movement of the chains right now as it does. They're getting in and out of the huddle. We haven't heard from McWilliams, the tight end, who's in a slot to the right. That was a first down pass. First and 10 ball was about the 33. He pitches it forward. He knew he was going to be tackled in the backfield and just kind of pitched it forward to Aaron Cobb, threw it out of bounds. Smart play by Jordan. Smart, but isn't that it almost looks like you're grounding, you know, to, to try to avoid a, a sack. But uh, we don't have those rules in the NCAA. <laughs> Did a nice backhanded flip. We have one minute and 10 seconds before halftime. St. Joseph with the ball, second down and 10. Ball is at the Wayne State 33. Tartars lead this game 14 to three. And Williams is in the slot to the right, folks. He likes to do business with him, he's in motion. And he's looking that way. Pressure, he lets the ball go to a big Williams though, the tight end. And we have another complete pass, Eddie Herbert with the tackle. Well, it was only a matter of time. Here's his second favorite receiver, McWilliams. Darryl McWilliams. Well, we'll come back with more Wayne State football after this message. If I thought that no one cared about the things I do in life, well, I'd still care about working hard and making it turn out right. Made in America, that means a lot to me. Oh, I believe in America and American quality. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. At Budweiser, we salute with pride what all Americans know in their hearts. The American workers' commitment to quality is stronger today than ever. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Nothing beats the quality of the American spirit. 
There are 56 seconds until halftime here on a cold Halloween day at Wayne State Stadium. The Tartars lead it 14 to 3, but St. Joe's has the ball in Wayne State territory at about the 28th, third and five. Mark Slate, who went in the motion right, the pass goes to Slate from Jordy. He overthrows him out of bounds. Tony Hawk there to make sure nothing gets out of hand. Uh, it's a play. It's a, here's a situation where they teach him football, even from the peewee football to college football. Never stop playing the game until the whistle blows. Tony Hawk just lit up somebody. Okay, what do you think about that new rule in the NFL where if you hit someone outside the sideline, they're calling it much more closely now, a penalty? Well, I, I think it's a good call, you certainly, but sometimes it's hard to stop on that sideline call, so it's a very difficult call. I think if you're going with your head down and you're spearing somebody, it definitely should be a 15 yard. Speaking of going, St. Joseph's going for it, fourth and five at the Wayne State 28. We have Stipe. Oh, and the flags are down. This will be fourth and ten. <laughs> A little bit too anxious on that line for St. Joseph's. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie Gather. Reggie was into his dance step there a little too early up there. He came up, did a nice thing though, he froze. So he thought maybe he could get away with it thinking that the official might think he's a tight end, which is all right to do. So this time we have Scheitz and Williams wide to the right side. Fourth and ten now. They have that safety come on over. Jordy back. He's going to look deep. It's Williams. Abby Herbert right there. Short of first down yardage. Nice play. Nice catch. Nice everything. Only one thing wrong with it. It was fourth and ten, not fourth and six. I always, you know, I don't... You know, in situations where it's Clifford's first and ten, and they get the ball to a receiver underneath and let him dance and play to try to get that extra eight or nine yards, but when it's fourth and ten, you have to get past ten yards. The Tigers take over the ball with 43 seconds left until halftime. First and ten at their own 26. The ball handed off to Joe Golf. He's still running. And finally, the tackle is made by Tom Offer of St. Joseph's. Clock is stopped right now with 37 seconds to go. Be interesting to see if they get one more first down. But Friday put the ball up and see if something can happen here in the last 30 seconds. Clock is running down to 30 seconds. First and 10. The first down yard is picked up by Joe Goff. Ball is at the 33 or 38 yard line of the Charters. Friday's back. He is looking to pass. Rolls around back there. Plenty of time. Oh, he's intercepted. The ball is intercepted by Mark Reiters. And with nine seconds left in the first half, once again a turnover, and St. Joseph's gets the ball back. Well, finally threw right into coverage that time. I don't know what he was looking at, but he's trying to make something happen when there was nothing there. Sometimes you just got to bring that rifle down and uh, go to a knee and let the clock run out. And Brian... Ben Gorda, the head coach of Wayne State's having a little conversation with Mr. Friday right now about that. So nine seconds left. This will probably be the last play of the first half. Jordy calls it. He's back. He's going to try to pass it. He looks long, lets it fly. It is caught by Murphy. Goes down, and we do have two seconds left before halftime. St. Joe called a timeout that time with two seconds, so they're going to try one more effort to throw it into the end zone before this half is over with. I would imagine that every defensive back is going to be on the 10-yard line. Kind of a sloppy end to the first half. Yes, it has been. It's been a very slow second quarter. Uh, a lot of penalties, a lot of missed opportunities for both teams. Griffin. Tell you what, the uh, Chargers are up 14 to three at halftime. You suspect that both coaches will have a lot to say to their players in that locker room during halftime. A lot of mistakes made on both sides of the ball here today. 
As we mentioned, the Tartars trying to go for their third victory in a row, something this team hasn't done in an awfully long time. The St. Joe Pumas attempting to just get a win on the season. They're 0-6-1, and, and not off to a good start so far in this game. This will be the last play of the first half. Jordy back, he has wide right. He rolls right, he looks, he lets it go. He's hit as he let it go. And it's batted down by Rashawn Hardy. And that's the end of the first half. With the score, the Wayne State Charters 14, the St. Joseph Pumas 3. We will be back with more Wayne State football action and a halftime report after this local message. shrouded mist it is coming the final phase of an accident of nature nothing human can have this in its veins and live it is unexplainable unbelievable and uncontrollable you can't see it in the darkness or hear it in the silence but you can feel its presence and sense the danger. Ah. Mutant. Don't go out there. It's time has come. Let me! Let me! Mutant. Any one of us could be one of them. There is no place left to run. Nowhere left to hide. And there is no escape. Mutant. It's a world of adventure. You ready for a little sheriff hunting? As young Robin Hood robs from the rich and gives to the poor. Robin Hood will be caught, no matter what the cost. He's fearless. Don't let him get away! He's courageous. <laughs> He's young Robin Hood. It's a world of adventure. Dark water off the starboard bow! And if you dare, join the fight against evil with the pirates of dark water. Guard the prisoners! They're fearless. You'll have to do better than that to catch me. <laughs> They're ferocious. They're pirates of dark water. Well, I just want to be not, I'm not, not enjoy put the coat on, put the coat on. Well, at halftime, the score is the Wayne State Charters 14, the St. Joseph Pumas 3 on this Halloween day. Hello, everybody. I'm Cliff Russell, along with Skip Mackles and Stanley Edwards. And in this first half, it's been all Tartars on the scoreboard, although both teams have had their share of mistakes, and both teams, Skip Mackles, have had their share of opportunities. Yeah, they really have. Uh, Wayne State had an opportunity to put this game away in the first half, and... Uh, and missed that opportunity to put another touchdown on the board. It was a fumble, a couple of fumbles, a couple of interceptions. Both team very sloppy second quarter, Cliff. Wayne State first ones to get on the board. They scored touchdowns uh, from Mark Friday, a pass to uh, Whitfield, I believe it was, right, the exactly. touchdown. Here's the, here's the now, touchdown right one, now. Beer, uh, I'm Joe, sorry. Joe, Joe Goff, Goff ran in the first touchdown. From five yards right off the right tackle, right time. That, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we're talking with Barry Smades right here shaking his head yes, that Goff went over 1,000 yards for the season on that particular run. Joe Goff, the second Wayne State ball carrier ever to right. run for 1,000 yards exactly. in the season. And right now, we're going to take a look at the pass. Here comes Whitfield out of the backfield on a pick play. Does a nice job, gets the ball, turns his shoulders up the field, and gets in for six. And this put them up 14 nothing, Clifford. The important thing, too, for the Chargers is that they were able to hold on to the ball for substantial chunks of the clock exactly. here the, on the field today. The, well, take a look at the, the pass play again. You see the pick, the ball go to the person coming inside. It's tough to cover that back coming out of the backfield. Produces a touchdown. The first drive on Joe Goff was like a 7-minute and 30-second drive, which really set the tempo for Wayne State in the first quarter. 
Well, now in the second half, both teams are certainly going to have an earful from their coaches. Yes, tell me, are. what is it that the coaches you think Skip Mackles will tell both the Charters and the Pumas? Well, I think both coaches are going to tell them they're going to have to go back to concentrating on what we're doing here. Uh, when you get a home uh, up 14 nothing, you get the crowd behind you a little bit, you get a little excited, you don't do the things that brought you to the dance. Uh, Coach Bryan's going to go back and tell him, let's concentrate on what we're doing. Let's put this game away. Let's not let St. Joe sneak back into this game again. St. Joe, on the other hand, had opportunities inside the red zone again, and they just haven't been able to do it. That's why they're 0-6-1, as we mentioned. They have to be able to score inside the 10, 15, 20-yard lines. They've had problems with that all year long. Stanley Edwards, also known as Mr. Halloween, has been on the sidelines. Stan, what have you seen uh, from your viewpoint there on the field? Well, it appeared that in the last two series that Wayne State might go up 21-3 uh, and they had the momentum going. But after those two fumbles, one by Joe Goff, and then in the last series, the interception by Mark Friday, it appeared that, that those uh, turnovers may come back and, if you will, haunt the uh, Tartars <laughs> in the second half. Uh, they had the momentum going. They were the poor in the last couple of series. We'll see what kind of momentum they can mount here going back into the second half. Back upstairs to you guys. <laughs> okay, did he really say haunt? <laughs> Well we'll, be back. <laughs> we'll be back with more Wayne State football action here at halftime to score the Charters 14, St. Joe 3. We'll be back after this message. Okay, so these guys may know a little more than we do about Bud. It's the rice. It's the hops. It's the rice. But of course, we know a lot about other things. Hi, I can buy you something to drink? Yeah, like maybe a light beer? Budweiser. Or uh, maybe you'd like a bud. Someday, boy, you're gonna learn from your mistakes. Feeling pressure to make life more productive? Relax. HAP keeps more people well than any HMO in Michigan. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. When it comes to health care costs, you can open wide or say ah. With HAP, you can enjoy no deductibles, co-pays, or out-of-pocket costs. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. To understand Asia, you have to understand its customs, its mystery, its people. You have to know what makes a good impression and what offends. For over 40 years, we've been learning about Asia. So in addition to our convenient schedules, we can give you something no other U.S. airline can. The knowledge that comes after 40 years of helping people do business in Asia. At Wayne State University, our research is making a difference. We're finding better ways to introduce new technology into the workplace. We're learning exactly what consumers want, so products are in the right place at the right time. At Wayne State's Bioengineering Center, we're having an impact on automotive safety. We're investigating how severely alcohol affects your heart. We're studying ways to use art as therapy with abused children. At Wayne State University, you too can make a difference. Wayne State University. Call us. Wayne State Football, brought to you by Budweiser. The king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. Health Alliance plan. Your health deserves the best. Buddy's Pizza, a great family tradition for over 50 years. Now with nine convenient locations. Metro 25 Tire Centers. For the dealer nearest you, dial 1-800-METRO-25. The Eyeglass Factory, the best price in sight. And by Northwest Airlines, some people know how to fly. This, of course, is a football, which has absolutely nothing to do with our halftime guest, Ron Hammy, the head basketball coach here at Wayne State University. And, Coach, good talking to you. Thanks, Cliff, but you haven't seen my guys shoot. That football could have a lot to do with it. <laughs> okay. Uh, coach Hammy, your team will enter this season rated number 12 in the country, so certainly expectations around the charter basketball program very high this year. Well, yeah, we are rated 12th, but I'm like the presidential candidates. I don't necessarily believe the polls. Um, We've got a lot of question marks. We lost some good people last year, a lot of leadership in, in Art Johnson and Otis Evans, who are with us for four years, and quality people as well as quality players. They've moved on, and we've got to have people fill their spots. 
When you come into this season, I understand that uh, you will have probably the largest front line that you've had in your program. Talk about those uh, up front big players. We have uh, a couple kids coming in this year. One is a transfer from St. Mary's College. Brian Kachelski coming at 6'9", can run the floor. Great shot blocker. We have a 6'8 sophomore who was in our program last year by the name of Randy Calcaterra. Randy has put on uh, a ton of weight. He's, 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 he's done a super job over the summer and this fall. Uh, he, he's going to help us a lot. And then we have returning our 6'7 captain, Andy Arolt, as well as a 6'6 uh, junior college transfer, William Page, who is going to help us tremendously as well. So we are, we are as big as we've ever been inside, and, and I think that's a plus. Okay, and what about those backcourt and perimeter players? Returning for us, we have uh, a young man by the name of Derek Hardy from Redford High School here in Detroit. Derek is one of the most exciting and explosive players in the conference. Uh, along with him, we have a young man that started off and on as a sophomore, a young man who started some as a freshman, and Scott Armstrong. Uh, Scott is one of the premier three-point shooters in the conference. Uh, we have a young man who was hurt most of last year, Mike Muscat, who is going to get some time at, at, uh, at the point for us. Mike is, too, a great, a great three-point shooter. And we have a transfer in by the name of Mark Hare, and Mark is from Mott Community College. Uh, he'll get some time at the point as well and is also a great shooter. So we feel we've got a great mix inside, outside, and we should be very exciting to watch. The emphasis on Tartar basketball has been defense in the years that I've been watching you, Coach Hammy, but uh, there's some indication that with these big players up front, you may look to change your style a little bit. Well, we still emphasize defense. However, we started this last year because we had such good people on the perimeter. Uh, we liked it. We set records last year for points scored here at Wayne State. And we're going to try to break that record this year. We get out, we run, our big guys can run, uh, and we like to shoot the three, and, w and we're going to go after it. Uh, uh, we not only want to play defense, we want to play pressure defense, we want to score points off our defense, uh, but when people score on us, we want to get it out and go. So uh, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, those two will add up to some exciting things. Normally you would have had two weeks of practice under your belt by now. This is the first year that the first day of practice in the NCAA is November 1st. Uh, how do you like the change? Well, there's, there's good and bad. I mean, I played golf last week, so that's the good. <laughs> the bad is... Uh, yeah, we don't we don't have a lot of time to get ready, and that's that's across the country. Everybody has to start November 1st, and I think that's wrong. Uh, there's some legislation now that'll be presented in January to the NCAA to push it back to October the 15th. I played in college, and even back way back then, it was October the 15th. So it, it's taken some getting used to. When you start practice. Uh do you have to accelerate your program for these kids? We we have to really push things in. We start tomorrow. We will go two-a-days tomorrow. However, we will only go two-a-days on Sundays. Um, we feel that the number one reason for these kids to be here is academics, of course, and, and, and we pursue that. Uh, if we were to go, if we were to go two a days during the week, we feel that we would we would jeopardize the academic end of it. They'd be so tired that that uh, they wouldn't get things done. We'd have to bring them in at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and then back at 5 o'clock at night, and that's just not fair to the kids. A couple things about your schedule this year. You're expected to win the conference. Your thoughts about the GLIAC and that big game against UAD. That rivalry has uh, been rekindled. Well, it, it has been rekindled. We try to think of that as just a game. The kids get pretty hyped for that one, and we try to tone it down. It is a big game, an opportunity for our kids to go down to Cobo Hall and play. As far as the league's concerned, I think there's going to be great balance. We won the league last year with four losses, the most losses ever by a team and still win the league, and we won the league by two games. So I think there's some strong teams. I think Grand Valley will be strong again. I think Northern Michigan will be, again, strong. Last year, we were picked eighth in the, po in the polls, the preseason polls for our conference. Uh, I don't think the polls mean a whole lot. You've got to go out and prove yourself. Here's a chance for a commercial. What do you say to those basketball fans looking for a good game to take in uh, here in the city of Detroit? The Great Lakes Conference is a great conference. We have great players in our conference. Come out, take a look at us, and you'll find that that's true. If I, I probably should tell you, too, this guy, a uh, former player at Bowling Green, I've played a few one-on-one -on -one games with him. He's not a bad player himself. Any chance you might shoot, suit up yourself during the season? Coach? Well, I, I, I wish I could, but I'm not willing to pay the price to get back in shape. So, no, Cliff. Playing use one thing, getting in shape to play this is another fantastic ron hammy head basketball coach here at wayne state university rated number 12 in the country expected to win the gliac and a pretty good guy too this is cliff russell we'll be back with more wayne state football after this
Mystic Music presents Instrumental Magic. 40 of the most beautiful melodies ever recorded. Just listen to these romantic favorites. the enchanting sounds of instrumental magic today. Three records or two cassette tapes, only $19.95. Two compact discs, only $24.95. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-258-6200 or send $19.95 for records or cassettes, $24.95 for CDs, plus $4 shipping to Instrumental Magic, P.O. Box 846, Department B, Valley Stream, New York. The greatest achievers in any sport or high-risk occupation are those that possess the confidence and desire to test their skills beyond the accepted boundaries. They live for the next challenge, setting goals and then attempting to reach them. The situations become critical as they go faster, further, and higher, continually pushing the limits. Extremists. Hey! I'm Isaiah Thomas. I've played basketball since I was young. Sometimes I won, sometimes I lost. Playing basketball and not using drugs or steroids made me a winner, both on and off the court. So be a winner. Play sport, play it cool, don't use drugs or steroids. You won't believe all you can do Ooh, when you play it cool. We're back at Wayne State Stadium, where at halftime, the score is the Wayne State Tartars 14, the St. Joseph Pumas 3. Hello, everybody. I'm Cliff Russell. I'm handling your play-by-play. -play. Former Wayne State basketball player here, but glad to be here in this capacity today. Also with Skip Mackles, former Michigan State football star, and Stan Edwards on the sideline, of course, the Michigan star. This first half has been pretty much all Wayne State. A few turnovers back and forth, Skip, but the, the Tartars so far have made a pretty good showing for themselves. Yes, they have, and I think the key to it all cliff is that uh let's go back to the start of it all um, when i'm prior to the game i'm talking to coach van gorder concerning that folks no wayne state team in a, in a long long time has had the opportunity to win three games in a row and i asked coach i said uh was there any conversation during the course of the week about uh winning the third game in a row on a team that's oh six and one the different philosophy of now you're supposed to win a football game can you get it done in years past teams that wayne state was supposed to beat they didn't beat they ran into turnovers storms what have you and came out with an l instead of a w right now and i said to brian was there any conversation he said to me that's more you guys talking. <laughs> yeah, he said more you guys in the press and in the TV talking that the third game in the pression supposedly win game. You know, it's a typical coach's uh, uh, answer that well, every team is a tough team and uh, they come right. out and they do this and they do that. Well, I guess so. But on paper, folks, they were supposed to win this game and they did take command of the football game. So that's a good feeling, I think, if you're on Wayne State's side of the football. Well, if you look at the statistics for the first half, you can see that the Wayne State Tartars really were dominating this football game uh, for the most part in terms of yardage and penalties have sure. certainly played a big factor in this game. Well, you know, you take a look at this right now, the yardage 153 and St. Joe's got 167 shows you how it really means really nothing that some of the passes came when they're in the prevent defense at the end of the quarter. We see 25 yards, 28 of those 167 was on a fourth and 10 with the clock on that last series. So, but the concern I would think would be those eight penalties for 66 yards and the two turnovers. And St. Joe has the six penalties for 37 yards. This is what coaches don't like to see on their screens. Those 116 yards passing for St. Joe, a good number of those two came on fourth down and long yarded yeah. situations where the Tartar defense just gave it up. Yeah, you know, and well, they play, they're back into a, a zone defense and then they're not expecting them to complete fourth and 15, fourth and eight. In fact, who's thinking about going for those type of downs? And yet St. Joe's is in a no-win no situation, folks. They're 0-6-1, so if they don't make a first down on fourth down, 
So what? <laughs> this game what is, difference does it make? <laughs> <laughs> this game is still far from over. Skip, what does the coach for Wayne State, Brian Van Gorder, tell his troops to rally him in the second half? And what did the coach on the other side say to try to get his team back in this game? Well, if I'm Brian, I know I'm getting the football in the second half, and what I'm going to try to do is let's go back to basics, man. We got Joe Goth. Uh, already now over a thousand yards he's gonna maybe become the the leading ground gainer for a single season in Wayne State history in the second half so he's gonna be used a lot we're gonna go to man-on-man -man blocking we're gonna do everything simple let's get back to basic football that's Brian's philosophy and the more the team takes to his philosophy the better off they're going to be on the other hand I don't know Mr. Reagan's got himself some problems, and his problems are that he can't score because once he gets inside the 20, his field, the amount of yards he has to deal with in his offense is limited, so he can't run the football. So what he's going to try to do is probably run, it when he gets inside the 20, as he did three or four times, run fades, meaning to Brian Williams, the leading receiver in the conference, hoping to get one-on-one -on -one coverage and throw a fade pattern uh, to to Williams or try to get a quick post out because obviously the offensive uh, line is not doing the job opening and creating holes down inside the 20 yard line. Tartars hoping to win their third game in a row as we mentioned. What does that mean for this team? Not only this game Skip but for this yeah. season. Well I'll tell you what Cliff as you know uh, we've done these televised games now three or four years and uh, at one point uh, Wayne State almost dropped their football program and now we can see uh, in the last four years, the different type of athlete coming, the different type of athlete now coming to Wayne State, and it's a viable, it's a viable choice now for some of these athletes in Detroit. Now, all of a sudden, this late in the season, they go one game away from being 500, three games in a row. They've had two great victories at, at I believe, at Hill, not at Hillsdale, and at, at uh, last week at Northern Michigan. Uh, program's definitely going in the proper direction. Well, I'll tell you what, Stanley Edwards is on the field right now with head coach Brian Van Gorder, and Stanley, we throw it to you. Hello, we're here with Coach Van Gorder. Coach Van Gorder scores 14-3 in your favor, but the game is far from over. Oh, yeah, that's that's why they call it halftime, and uh, we always remind our players of that, and uh, and we got to play better football here in the second half than we did the first half. Okay, what did you tell your team in particular you're going to concentrate on here in the second half? Well, you know, offensively, I think that uh, everything we did, uh, you know, was fairly successful. So uh, we had to chore up a few things in terms of our blocking schemes and uh, some things that they did this, uh, uh, towards the end of the second half that uh, that we want to take advantage of here. So, uh, and defensively, we got to stop them from rolling out. And uh, it's as simple as that. Otherwise, uh, I think they're going to have a hard time running against us. And uh, we're going to get a little bit more pressure from our uh, front four. and. But uh, we're ready to play. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Good luck thank in the you. second half. And like you said, the score is 14-3, and it's far from over. It has some significant injuries in the first half we may want to pay attention to. The uh, Bruce showed it that, uh, that Joe Goff uh, suffered on his touchdown score, and uh, the quarterback, Mark Friday, also injured his right shoulder as well. So we're going to pay attention to those injuries here in the second half to see if they play a significant. Back up the stairs to you guys. Well, thank you, Stan. You, thank you, Stanley Edwards. We heard it from Coach Van Gorder, Skip Mackles. Yes. He says they want to try to keep this man right here, Jordy, from rolling out. That's how uh, perhaps oh. St. Joe can get back in this game. He's had a, a lot of success. As you can see, he's a big young fella there. Big, strong guy with a nice arm on his shoulder that he's had success when he gets outside of containment. Brian's concerned with containing him in so that the lanes are filled by the defensive linemen and this kid will get jittery. We did see some happy feet on him and throwing up some passes that never should be thrown. That's what his problem is, but once again, that's a sophomore's play. Jordy 10 for 22 in the first half, 116 yards, one interception, but seems like he got stronger as they got uh, closer to halftime and as, as the game progressed. Well, he, at one point he was only three for something. He did complete seven passes in about the last eight minutes of the of the first half, and you're going to see that they live and die by the pass, and right now the wind has died down. There's no wind on the flags as we take a look to our right. The field, the sun has come out. It looks like a, just a great day to play football here in Detroit. Whoever can seize the momentum at the start of this second half may well go on to win this game. Well, as we did see, uh, Cliff, when Wayne State got the second possession in the first quarter, they took... I believe, and we'll go to Barry Smays, our, our stat man, who is one of the best in town. 
seven minutes and 38 seconds on that drive. That's exactly what they're going to try to accomplish on this drive in the opening kickoff. We'll see what happens. Joe Goff rushed 17 times for 92 yards as the kickoff for the second half is underway. And we do have a kickoff. The Wayne State player returns the ball 24 yards before finally being tripped up. Al Delps was on the uh, the tackle. Of course, the ball carrier was uh, Tony Hawk. So the Wayne State Tartars will start the second half with the ball, first and 10, and the ball is at the Tartar 37-yard line. Right now, they're declining uh, uh, offsides on a kickoff on St. Joe's. And right now, we're going to see what happens right now. I'll tell you what, I keep on saying ball control, and here I am a little excited. I like to see Ponder on a play action. I, this Ray Ponder is an exciting type of ball play, Cliff. We'll see Friday's numbers we showed a little bit earlier. He's passed for 50 yards, but he certainly has the arm to do more. But he hands off to Joe Golf up the middle on that play. Golf picks up two yards and make it second down and eight for the Tartars. Nothing fancy right there. Exactly what we're talking about. Joe's going to carry the ball. I think they're going to try to get Joe that, that, that record right now in the second half. I don't think there's any question about that, Clifford. Seemed like Wayne State dominated the first half, but when they showed the stats there, it shows that near the end of the second quarter, St. Joe's really kind of had possession of the ball, scored some, uh, or made some yardage, and I'm wondering, yes. will fatigue become a factor uh, well, the, for the, in this exactly, game? Exactly. St. Joe has been on defensively on the field practically the whole first half. Friday goes back, and he is snowed under by St. Joseph, Jim McDonald, and the rest of the Pumas. And they're saying fumble. it was a fumble and recovered by Madonna. It'll be St. Joseph's ball. And this is not exactly the way Brian Van Gorda's Wayne State football team wants to start the first series in the second half. Let's go! Let's take a look at this right now. Friday's getting pressure from everybody. He ain't got a shot here. He looks like he tucks it away. We can't see the ball must come loose. We can't. He steals the ball, basically. Now, I think Friday was trying to down. complain. He's saying that he was down. The play should have been whistled dead. The official didn't see it that way. Didn't see it that way, and so it is first and ten in Wayne State territory for St. Joseph. We have Williams wide, wide right. Hand off this to Eastwood. This is exactly how they started the game off in the first half. Exactly, but they went to the right. This time they went to the left. They're trying to run that football, trying to establish a running game. Melvin Coleman, the Wayne State middle linebacker there to meet uh, Mr. Eastwood, but not until after he gains four yards. It'll be second.